Welcome back. Five days remain now for the Wisconsin gun deer season, and the hunters are going to need to pick up the pace a little bit. The DNR releasing preliminary numbers from opening weekend, and they're down from last year, and they're 10% below the five-year average for opening weekend. The gun deer season is a critical part, of course, of the DNR's deer management program, but while the harvest numbers are down this year, the number of hunters continues to decrease as well. We want to talk more about this in depth. We bring in Jeff Pritzel. He is a DNR deer program Specialist. So the, the final gun license numbers for this year, Jeff, they're not in it yet. But last year you saw a slight decline, about 1.5%, just over 550,000 uh, licenses. But this year, as of 11-19, so Sunday night, you were behind that number, 420,000 and change. So do those decreasing numbers surprise you? Uh, Chris, they actually don't because we've been seeing this trend really for a couple of decades now, and it's not unique to Wisconsin. Um, this is something all of the Midwest and, and even Eastern, you know, white-tailed deer heavy states have been experiencing. So it doesn't come as a surprise. Um, and it, it very much matches the demographics of our hunting population. Um, we just, the baby boomer generation there was a lot of them relative mm -hmm. to some of the other generations and they really embraced hunting and especially deer hunting and they're at the point where they're starting to retire from deer hunting and so it's just that volume of that age cohort that is retiring slowly um, and it's just not being replaced at the same rate that that they're dropping out. I know you said this is a trend that's continued for a while, but is it a little bit surprising because the nature of hunting is is tradition, right? And and handed down from family to family, but somewhere that, that apparently is getting lost because that younger demographic is not filling in the gap. Yeah, well, I, the younger demographics, and I saw this experience this in my own household, um, they simply have a lot more options on the plate for how to spend sure. their free time, the competition for that. And um, there was a time, you know, when I, even when I was youngster, that um, the, the things that hunting offered, the pursuits of whether it was on one end of the spectrum, the, the peace and tranquility and beauty of the natural world and the calmness that comes with that, or the adrenaline rush that mm -hmm. comes from the excitement of uh, seeing a deer or whatever you're after, there's other ways in life now that those same kind of emotions can be experienced. And I think some people are just finding them in other ways, but, but hunting continues to you know, that outdoor lifestyle offers a, a quality of life um, that keeps it. It does keep it up front and center for a lot of people in Wisconsin. I think if you go to other States, they're seeing their rate of loss actually be worse than what we're seeing in Wisconsin. But bottom line is, and when I think about it, it's not about the money or the revenue or the number of people from that standpoint. It, to me, it's the number of people that just aren't experiencing that as part of the quality of life of, of being a Wisconsinite that it offers. That's the lifestyle argument. But on the other side of it, for your job, it, it's the real life numbers of deer management and, and managing that, that population. So if you cannot rely on the same number of hunters year after year, how does that change the conversations and, and the planning when it comes to managing a herd? Well, so we have a long history of having tracked hunter harvest behavior, and we know that um, there's a there's a capacity to the individual successful hunter in terms of how many deer they're able to or willing to actually harvest. And so the conversation going forward is going to have to revolve around um, incentivizing especially antlerless deer harvest. Right. Um, that's really the mechanism by which how we control the, the, the rate of growth of a deer population. And so we're gonna have to talk about ways of making it easier and more incentive to harvest antlerless deer for those that find themselves in a position to do so. Well, they used to have earn a buck and that, that was taken out by the legislature back in 2011. It was a very controversial program, but it, it forced people to take antlerless deer. You probably don't have that avenue open to you, what kind of things have you discussed outside of that possibility? Well, I think one of the things we try to talk about is ideally this would be voluntary behavior. And right. People would feel comfortable doing that. And one of the main conversations I think we, we have been having, but we need to step up even more is for those hunters. And this isn't every hunter. There's the whole spectrum of 
you know, some hunters unfortunately find themselves in a situation where it's not that easy for them to get a deer, but there's a bunch of hunters that know they have access to the deer, probably more deer than they really want to, but that's where we really need to make the management decision. And those hunters need to find an easier way, essentially to harvest more deer and share uh, in that bounty. And so thinking about their role in the community to help um, from a food security standpoint, right. the mechanisms of harvesting and sharing venison in the community um, outside of their immediate family is, is probably part of that mechanism to get the average hunter that shoots a deer and maybe a second deer, um, but that's it, um, to maybe shoot one additional deer for the purpose of sharing with others in the community. Um, that would be the, the best path forward that I can see. That's a great message, certainly this week with Thanksgiving. Jeff, thanks for the time. Here's to a safe and successful rest of the hunting season. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, thanks, Chris. You too.